As an editor, one of the hardest things that you're gonna have to go through can be solved with a very easy step that I'm gonna show in this video. And that is simply losing data. If you've ever gone through and edited a project, you know you can spend hours, days, even years working on a single project. And if you don't back that project up, it can be very easy to lose that data. So what we're gonna show in this video is how to use Time Machine to back up your computer. And this should be a short video because it's very simple. Just open up System Preferences and click on the Time Machine System Preference pane. You're then gonna be uh, shown this preference pane here. And right now I have it set up to back up automatically to an external hard drive that I've called Time Machine. You can see it back here on the desktop. And it's actually preparing another backup right now to uh, back up to that external drive. So what does this mean? If you're not familiar with backup, if you're newer to uh, editing with Final Cut, this may be something that's a newer uh, thing that you have to worry about because you may have seen that Final Cut does make backups of the projects in the libraries, but that's just making a copy of it, usually onto the same hard drive as your actual project. So if you're backing up your projects to your computer and your your library is also stored on the computer, and something happens to this computer, well, you don't really have a backup because you've lost both the actual library, the primary library, and those backups. So what Time Machine is designed to do is create a backup onto an external hard drive. So that way you can have an external hard drive and your computer. If the computer breaks, it's okay because you have an external hard drive, you can bring back the data from that. And you can see a list of how this Time Machine software works. It creates local snapshots on the computer and then makes hourly backups to the external drive. So it's making those copies and sending them off to that external drive. And then as it goes and creates more and more backups, it'll do it daily and weekly. And then what's happening right now, you can see I only have eight gigabytes out of the eight terabytes that's on this backup drive. So what's gonna happen is the oldest backups are deleted when the hard drive becomes full. And it, it is really simple, it just manages everything for you. You can check this box that says show time machine in the menu bar. And when you go up to the menu bar, you'll have a time machine little tab here that you can click on. And this menu allows you to skip a backup if you don't want it to actually happen right now. You'll see at the top here, it says preparing backup. When the backup is completed, you'll see when the last backup was created and it'll show when it's successfully backed up there. And if you want to, in, in this case, it's backing up. So I'm gonna actually skip this backup. You'll get an option here that says backup now. So I can see last backup was earlier today and I could back up right now. And this is important as you, as a Final Cut editor, if you're saying, okay, I'm done working on the project right now, the last Mac backup might have been 45 minutes ago. So you can go up here and hit backup now to start the backup right away. If you've lost something, then it goes into actually recovering that information. So that's where you're gonna enter into Time Machine. So I'm gonna hit enter Time Machine. And this brings up a normal finder window. Final Cut doesn't allow you to do Time Machine at least right now within Final Cut. So you're gonna see your finder window and you'll wanna to navigate to uh, the actual file that you're trying to recover. So let's say I had an issue with my Final Cut library that's in the movies folder. Maybe the nice Six Flags trip was having a problem. So I'm gonna click on the Six Flags trip and then on the right here, I have options to go back in time. Right now we're viewing what it looks like today at this moment, but I could hit this back button and it'll go to that backup that was at 918 today. And I can see that file there as well. And I could keep going back using these arrows or on the right side, you have a whole history of all of the backups that were created and they just keep going further and further back in time. Uh, like you saw on the list of things that happens, they do daily and hourly backups. And then after some time, then it starts to go into uh, weekly backups. So for the older ones, you'll see uh, they go back and then they, we have them by weeks. So it's clearing out some of that older information. But in this case, I can go all the way back to August. Uh, that's the oldest backup that was created for uh, this machine here. But any of these, if you wanna go back in time, just click on the button and then it flies back to that moment in time. We can see the files that were there. If I needed to bring back a project that was inside this Six Flags trip, I would select the library and at the bottom you have a restore button. Just click that button and it starts to copy all of the data back to uh, your current machine. Um, let's do just one little file here. I'm gonna do just this video file as an example. I'll hit restore. 
Notice it's bringing that file back to the current moment in time. That file does already exist. So it says, do I want to keep both or replace the one that's on the machine? When you're bringing back a library, it's most common that you'll want to keep both so that you don't lose the original or the one it's replacing. So um, that's what this is. Uh, in this case, I'll say keep both. We then see both uh, versions here. Because it's Time Machine and it's going back in time, the older one is actually the original file because this one is a newer version of that. So now we see both of those uh, files there. So that's using Time Machine to make a backup. Setting up Time Machine is very simple. You just need an external hard drive. If that hard drive is not formatted correctly, it'll take you through the steps to format that. But really, this is a set it and forget it thing. When my setup here, uh, next to my iMac, I have that external drive that's called Time Machine and it just goes and backs up. If we look at the machine or at the Time Machine uh, drive here, we have one folder that's the backup folder. There's the iMac for my computer. Here are all the backups in there. You don't want to be messing around with these folders. You should do everything within the Time Machine uh, app. You can delete files within Time Machine. You shouldn't do it through this actual drive. You want to do it through the Time Machine app uh, that you access through the menu bar here when you say enter Time Machine. Uh, there was one, yeah, one last thing I wanted to, to comment just in terms of backup scenarios. There are a lot of online backups, especially with video. It can take a long time to backup online. So if you want to protect your space, because in, in my setup right here, I have an iMac and a hard drive sitting next to it. If someone were to come in and rob the place and take the iMac, they might also take the hard drive. If there's a fire or another physical issue with the place, it might damage both the iMac and that external time machine drive. So if that's the case, what I recommend doing is getting multiple time machine drives. This eight terabyte hard drive I got probably for about $150 on uh, Amazon. It was pretty inexpensive compared to how much storage that is. And then get yourself a safety deposit box at a bank or somewhere else that's a secure location for you and periodically switch out the drives. So you can have a time machine backup that's here in the office and then maybe every month or periodically you can take that drive, take it to the um, wherever your external source is, whether it's a safety deposit box or somewhere else, and switch out the drives. That way, worst case scenario, something happens in your location. You might lose the most recent backups, but if you're working on a project that you've been working on for years, you might not lose that much information. You may only lose a couple days or a week uh, because you can go to that external space. So. Just remember your data, you can't physically see it because it's just internal to the computer, the external drive, it's somewhere in there, but that data is time. And to lose that, all that creative work that you've done, it's just not a good thing to go through. I've gone through it with many people where we've lost data and hours of work and more, and it's it's not a great, uh, not a great feeling. And especially when it comes to your own personal data, if you have one copy of that interview that you shot with someone and that person's passed away, you can't go and reshoot that interview. You are going to lose that data. So if it's important to you, copy it, copy it as many times as you can, make those backups because it's very easy to go back and pull back data. It's impossible to go and reshoot something that uh, the subject or the scene or whatever's happening is gone. Uh, that's not something you want to have to deal with. So Especially if you're new to this, make sure you make those backups. And if you have any issues with it, weird error messages, post them in the comments below or send an email to finalcutprohelp at me.com and subscribe for our next tip coming up tomorrow. We're going to talk about disk utility. And if there's something specific you want to know, let me know. We'll cover that topic. I don't mind doing that at all for you in this month of Mac OS tips.